So I'm two-thirds of the way through Otto Rank's book, Art and the Artist, Creative Version Personality Development, which I must say is one of the most difficult books I've ever read, especially having the flu last week. But it's impressive. I mean, he goes into excruciating detail, explaining art history, trends, psychological developments, social events, laying the groundwork for uh, Ernest Becker's later Pulitzer-winning work, in which he basically elaborated upon some of these ideas, uh, clarifying some, uh, expanding upon others, and uh, mainly uh, making them more digestible for public consumption. In the light of modern knowledge, well, we can say that Otto Rank's work has been confirmed he asks the question, well, what is the basic level of creativity that we would expect from a creature with a big brain bent mainly on survival and reproduction? And that may be things like enhancing weapons to hunt or shelter to survive and protect oneself, but nothing like what we have. And studies in terror management theory which has been around now for over 30 years, show that there's a close link between our death anxiety, which comes as a byproduct of our self-awareness, uh, our survival instinct conflicting with the knowledge of our mortality, and it shows that when you remind people of death, they adhere more closely to uh, uh, their ideas and people who hold those ideas and uh, uh, become more aversive toward those who do not share those ideas and also you have death thought accessibility ideas of death that crop to the mind and those become less accessible when uh, you are in contact with uh, those who share your beliefs or the ideas themselves and the death thought accessibility becomes stronger when those people or those concepts are not there or they're challenged. And uh, all these come to uh, associate the cultural creations and our creativity in many different realms with a certain basic death anxiety. And uh, without any of that research, Otto Rang was able to figure out some of these dynamics by his analysis alone and um, he says that there's a certain creative ethos or creative energy that uh, we perceive in nature and uh, in the universe you know the creation of stars of uh, chemical events uh, live flowers creatures uh, all that stuff and uh, the artist would like to connect to that by connecting to that basic creative ethos, which some people may interpret as some god or some essence of the universe, well, you can transform yourself into a sort of small god of sorts. But the artist at the same time has a deep perception of his own animal impermanent nature. And so he feels sort of guilty playing god uh, tuning in to this creative urge uh, because after all the creative energies of the universe are quite real whereas the creations of the artist are in many ways speculations they don't have the 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 permanent or the power or the uh, majesty of uh, these uh, uh, natural or uh, cosmic creations and so there's a dual tendency one is to uh, have that connection to that natural or cosmic uh, creative ethos. Now the one is to uh, simply subject yourself to the cultural status or the cultural trend of your time period. And those cultural trends are divided into fundamentally two different systems. Secular systems and religious systems. Now, in the religious systems, like, say, primitive society, the artist fundamentally 
concretize the religious ideas of the time, like the soul, ancestors, depicting them, say, in uh, painting, sculptures, or sometimes uh, depicting scenes where humans have a certain level of dominance over the animal surroundings, over nature. In this way, there's a uh, level of credibility that is added to religion, which after all is very abstract and thus hard for a lot of people to buy into. And so the artist gets his immortality through the religion, and he simply helps concretize some of the concepts to make it more believable. Secular culture, which is composed of ideas that don't grant you literal immortality, but grant you a sense of legacy. Basically, you may die, but by contributing to these concepts and ideas and uh, societal structures, you gain a sense that some tangible part of you remains through your contribution. This could be patriotism, family, progress, uh, it could be um, uh, some type of uh, uh, monetary achievement because after all you are considered to be an individual of value in a world of meaning with money in our society so by complying by the standards of society like having money like being a good citizen you gain a sense of belonging to this larger body that lives on after your individual death and so the artist is complying or subjecting himself to the standards of the society which has different standards depending on the time period and this is the way the he or she gains acceptance sometimes even fame and popularity and that grants him or her a sense of symbolic immortality and so that is a way to achieve some death anxiety reduction but not what he or she really wanted which is to connect to this deeper more profound creative ethos of nature and the cosmos and that is something that the artist has perhaps to a larger extent at the beginning before he becomes famous where he's just trying to find himself trying to find out if his uh, creative urges can connect to this larger whole but ends up sort of complying with the wishes of society that gives him a more realistic uh, although less ambitious sense of immortality because after all the artist uh, feels that he cannot compete with the creative energies of the universe and nature which are creating flowers and stars and uh, life processes and chemical marvels of geometric uh, you know absolute uh, majesty and so his sense of guilt his uh, sort of smallness in the uh, uh, in the eyes of um, this large uh, creative uh, ethos compel him to subject himself to the uh, society that he is uh, uh, working for and so he can never be completely satisfied. He gets partial anxiety reduction, but not total. And uh, the reason why the artist cannot do like the average citizen, which is simply to subject himself to these uh, larger structures, to simply be a cog uh, in the uh, larger system, is because he has a sense of um, larger need for anxiety reduction he's more neurotic and so he's not satisfied with what the average person is satisfied with and uh, also he cannot buy into their uh, concepts of uh, legacy he doesn't think that they're satisfying enough and uh, he also usually cannot buy into the religious ideas especially in our secular age and once again in a religious time well, the artist was concretizing, helping uh, the uh, credibility of religion. And so there's a third figure here, which is the neurotic, and that is the person that has no artistic talent 
uh, although he has the same personality profile of the artist in the case of um, you know the uh, anxiety that I'm talking about but in having no artistic talent he cannot get that sense neither of connection to the artistic ethos or creative ethos of nature nor the acceptance by the society as a whole and thereby uh, acquisition of uh, a legacy and so the neurotic is pretty much stuck and um, in older times when uh, society was more religious than neurotic at least had a sense of belonging to a religious community uh, in primitive times being part of a ritual uh, conception of the universe in which uh, you felt you know dancing around the fire or whatnot that you uh, were controlling the world that the stars were uh, uh, here and there and doing this and that or that the kangaroos were going to turn brown next season because of the magical powers that you fantasized having uh, and that you know every single member of the tribe even the most humble person uh, was taking part on this uh, of this ritual but uh, as societies became more secular then that no longer became possible and so the need for alternative means of achieving um, that uh, relief you know became necessary and uh, romance of course is another one that I forgot to mention romantic uh, ideation and uh, that is also something that uh, many people hold on to and uh, it's uh, tied once again uh, just like all the concepts in secular society patriotism progress uh, family um, art itself money it is all tied to the artist in some way because the artist is also just like in religious society contributing to the credibility of all these concepts as well.